Hi, I'm Fab from PureMix.net and you're now watching Wing Sound. I'm here at Frisonosphere 2012 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we're about to talk about Studio One and event effects. Because of the paradigm that all the DAWs think like consoles, right? So if you want to put a piece of reverb, you send the whole track to the reverb. To do that in a traditional DAW, you automate the reverb send into another track, and then every four bars you jack it up on that thing, you got to do it for the whole track. What Studio One has done is you can take that effect, and instead of dragging it onto the whole track, you drag it just on that little region, that one snare. And now that plugin is attached to just that snare. So now you can copy that snare and the reverb copies with it. That's really sharp. Events can be resized by selecting the arrow tool and hovering over the edge of the event. When you see the handle icon appear, click and drag to resize. They also include their own volume and gain envelopes, making it easy to create fades and adjust the overall gain of any particular event. Here's a snare pattern that I want to add a reverb to, but only on every other beat. First I'll use the split tool to create the audio event, or you can split the audio files between the loop start and end points using Shift Command X. Select the audio event and open the track inspector with key command F4. Or you can click on the inspector button at the top of the track column. Below the channel fader is the event inspector section. Click the enable button within the event effects tab. The insert device rack is now activated. Here you can add new effects, load channel strip presets, and route the signal path to process volume before or after the event effects. Let's add the Open Air Impulse Reverb plugin and choose a drum preset. Let's scroll down to Rooms, choose Drum Rooms, and the Big Snare preset. Next, we'll add the Beat Delay plugin. Okay, that sounds good. Now that the effects are set, click the Render option. This will print the effects onto the audio event, freeing up CPU power. The render process is non-destructive, meaning you can always restore the original real-time effect to make changes. Event effects also carry over when you copy and paste the event onto the timeline. Now when we play back, the effect will only be on the snare hits we added the reverb to, leaving the rest of the snare track on that same channel untouched. Event-based effects were requested by our community and by users all over, and I think it took us maybe three months to get it in the software. We have a beta user group that's out in a forum, and everything is driven from that. I'm in the company, and I can say, hey, Studio One guys, this is the feature I want. And they'll say, go into the forum, and let's talk about it. It's truly the community drives it. Wink Sound is your source for free music and audio technology videos. Join the conversation by following Wink Sound on Twitter and YouTube to keep up with everything you need to know about music and audio technology.